The idea of an Israeli tech tree being added to the game has been a point of contention for some time, and for good reason. Israel, while interesting, isn't exactly known for producing the kinds of vehicles that are needed to make up a full tech tree in War Thunder, and didn't even exist as a nation until after the Second World War, which once upon a time was the most major thing this game was about. On the other hand, Israel is a fairly major nation on the world stage in the modern day, they've seen without a doubt the most combat outside the US, and War Thunder just isn't so much about World War II anymore, with a large focus placed on more modern vehicles which Israel has made several of. Now, I have been caught saying in the past that I don't think Israel should be added as a major playable nation at all. Now, Nothing against anybody who is Israeli, I'm not saying that Israeli vehicles should not be added. Now, I was excited by the addition of the Magash 3 and Shot Cal back in the day, and I've also said that the Israeli Mirage variations, the Nesha and Kafir, could make for great French premium or squadron vehicles at some point. But that's just it, that's how I thought Israel would continue to be represented in game, although it would be a little unfair for free to play players if all the Israeli vehicles ended up as premiums. But no longer, the cat's out of the bag now and there's no stuffing it back in, though people will be trying. And I'm kind of in a good mood right now, so considering that nothing I could possibly say would prevent it coming now anyway, I feel like being positive today about the new Israeli tech tree. Now before we get into anything I just want to clarify, obviously there is a lot of controversy surrounding Israel as a nation, uh, but that's got nothing to do with why I've spoken against adding this tech tree in the past and it's got absolutely no bearing on today's video. I would thank you guys for keeping political discussions out of the comments section so that we can focus on what matters here, which is what this means for the game. So let's start off with what we know. In the upcoming major update Groundbreaking, alongside Terrain Deformation, Weasels and other new vehicles, will come a 10th nation, Israel. For this update at least, this will be an aviation only tree, with tanks coming later down the line, similar to how the French, Italian and Swedish trees were added. Again, as with those nations, the Israeli aviation tree will release in the form of an initial closed beta, which you'll have to buy your way into. At least that's the only way we know of so far at the time of writing this, uh, though in the past there have also been challenges that players could complete as a freeway into the closed tree. Perhaps we could get a certain amount of kills with a Super Mystere or Mirage. I don't know. The pre-order packs that are being released consist of firstly a Spitfire LF Mark IX used by former Israeli president Ezer Weitzman, I'm probably pronouncing that very wrong, uh, with a unique black camo and some new rockets for ground attack. Weitzman was also the head of the Israeli Air Force and the country's Minister of Defense, and actually flew as part of Israel's first ever fighter mission in 1948, flying the Evia S-199, a modified BF-109 G-10. Now this aircraft also has the title of being the first fighter Israel ever procured, which is interesting, because it's a rank 4 aircraft in War Thunder. We'll come back to this. Now, the Spitfire LF Mark IX is already represented twice in-game, both in the British tech tree and as a US premium, and this one will have the twin Hispano and twin M250 cal armament. Spitfires are all really good aircraft, and the LF Mark IX is certainly no exception. It climbs incredibly well, and is relatively easy to use. Now, I expect this is an aircraft we'll also be seeing in the Israeli aviation tech tree, so the uniqueness of the premium, aside from the double rewards and access to the CBT, will be the history behind its pilot and its unique camo. Now, if you're keen on buying either of these aircraft, then hold your horses, because we recently got our own decal in War Thunder. My god, I couldn't be happier or prouder. So if you do want to grab an Israeli premium or anything else off the War Thunder store, then do so using the link below for a 3% discount and our Coalition Forces decal as a free bonus. I think it looks really, really good. You also support the channel, so there is literally no reason to ever go to the Gaijin store without using our link, which you'll find at the top of the video description in all my videos from now on. I do of course recommend that before you pre-order premium vehicles, you be able to test them out on the dev server, but uh, this video is coming out a couple of days late and the dev servers have been and gone now. But of course the Spitfire is already in the game for you to test fly, and our second premium will be quite familiar too. 
This will be our rank 6 Israeli premium aircraft, a late modification of the A4E Skyhawk and something I am very excited for. The Skyhawk is my favourite ground attack platform in the entire game, one of my favourite IRL jets as well. And while I know a lot of you specifically don't like the look of the later models with the dorsal spine, I, uh, yeah, this really tickles my sausage. The Skyhawk was the first American aircraft offered to Israel for purchase in 1966, and these were A4E and the more powerfully engined A4F models. The latter came as standard with that big hump, which houses ECM equipment like radar jammers and radar warning receivers, but many A4Es, including those in US service, uh, also got the same upgrade later in life. Later on, the Israeli Air Force would take delivery of the improved A4H model, which switched out the 20mm guns for 30mm DEFA cannons and included extended tailpipes, which were designed to reduce the aircraft's heat signature and protect against heat-seeking missiles, though how much of a difference this would actually make in practice, I don't really know. I doubt it was much. The A4E Late, as it's being called by Gaijin, is an A4E modified locally to the A4H standard, including the avionics hump, the 30 mils, the upgraded engine, which had almost a 20% thrust increase over the one we see on our A4E in-game, and that longer tailpipe. Now, I assume the increase in thrust was more to offset the extra weight and drag of the avionics hump than to increase performance. Uh, which I only found out the other day is actually nothing to do with the guidance of weapons like the AGM-62 Walleye TV guided bombs or AGM-45 Shrike anti-radiation missiles, and neither of which are coming to our existing USA-4E as it's not the right block to get them. The main thing that that spine will do for us in War Thunder is give you an RWR, which will be very helpful uh, and of course make the thing look damn sexy. Now that brings us to one of the unique features of this aircraft, in that it will get access to the new walleyes, which are also coming to the US tech tray on the A7E, the naval version of the Corsair II. What these are, to boil it down, are unpowered mavericks. Now, from substantial ranges outside a couple of kilometres, these things can home in on a specific target, like a vehicle, Instead, they track a point on the ground. But from closer ranges, they can lock onto a tank, just like a Maverick missile. Uh, but keep in mind, these ones are gliding, so they rely on the speed of the aircraft when dropped. You might need to practice with these a wee bit to get the hang of the distances and airspeeds you'll need. The thing is, while they're not fire and forget, I would honestly rather have the five bullpups of the American A4E than the two walleyes of the Israeli. And at least on the dev server, the A4E late did not have bullpups of its own. Now, Israel did use the bullpup from 1970, so we'll have to see if it gets access to them. Otherwise, I'm not sure I'd call this aircraft better than the American A4E. More a side grade to it. Now, on the dev server, this aircraft also only had AIM-9Bs, but it should be capable of carrying the AIM-9D, which was the main sidewinder of the IAF at this time. In fact, they actually had over 2,000 AIM-9Bs in 1973. We'll have to wait and see, dev servers aren't final, they're of course all subject to change, and at the time of recording this, the pre-orders are still not available to purchase. When they are, we'll hopefully get some more information. The last thing to consider before you go out and buy yourself one of these things is that this aircraft's main job is as a ground pounder, but you won't be able to use it in ground battles until a tank tech tree is released, and if you're ground pounding in air battles, you're probably going to get more done by just taking the larger amount of dumb bombs. Admittedly though, the Skyhawk doesn't have a ballistic computer, so walleyes may at least be easier and let you bomb accurately from farther distances and altitudes. Aside from that, we have a wee bit more information on what the Israeli tech tray will look like so far, and we also know that any Israeli premium vehicles in other nations' trees are going to be removed from sale, so if you want your premium Apache, now's the time to pick it up. Once again, use my link below for that sweet, sweet 3% off. Now, I'm not sure which Israeli premiums are going to be removed this patch. It sounds like just the Voltor 2A and F84F Thunderstreak premiums in the French tree. And yes, I do have confirmation that the F84F is being counted and will be removed. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but the Israeli Air Force never used the Thunderstreak themselves. Instead, French pilots supported the IAF during the Suez War by flying their F-84Fs marked in Israeli colours. It was actually quite controversial. 
Uh, but that's why the French have this so-called Israeli premium in-game. It will be counted and moved over to the Israeli trade. If you already have any of these vehicles, nothing will happen to them. They'll just be removed from further sale and equivalents will be released for those nations in future updates. Now, Israel did acquire some earlier fighter aircraft after they bought that BF-109 variant I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Skyhawk was the first US aircraft cleared for sale to Israel, but they did get their hands on some P-51s before that. And there are options that people have suggested for armed trainers like the T-6 Texan or Avro Anson, with performance equivalent to rank 1s or 2s. However, Gaijin have instead elected to begin the Israeli tech tree at a rank higher than 1. Now this would make sense given that the nation of Israel was first founded in 1948, but it will be interesting to see how one gains access to the Israeli tech tree. Unless you're saying that this one particular nation allows new players to skip over the rank 1 and 2 grind that every other nation has to go through. Somehow, I doubt it'll be that easy. So what kinds of vehicles can we expect to see from the Israeli tech tree, and more importantly the aviation tree which is the one coming this update? Now I'm not going to beat around the bush, most of these aircraft are going to be copy paste. The P-51, various Spitfires, B-17s and BF-109s, expect a lot of French jets from the Oregon to the Valtor, a Mystère 4, a couple of Super Mystères with some unique modifications, and of course Mirages and Mirage variations. There may be a Meteor thrown in there too. Now aside from the premium A4 Skyhawk, we are also sure to get at least one if not two Tech Tray versions, and two versions of the F4E Phantom, at least eventually, at one without the Agile Eagle upgrade, and one with it, plus a pulse doppler radar and some later weapons. So uh, where's the Israel in this Israeli tech tree? This just sounds like an excuse to put F4 Phantoms in an otherwise mostly French tree. There's literally zero purpose to this tree at this point. Well, that's where we come to the later Israeli variations of the Mirage 5. Now, if you don't know, the Mirage 5 was not an upgrade to the Mirage 3. In fact, to us, it would be a downgrade because it has no radar. It was designed specifically for Israel for the ground attack role and sacrificed the radar in order to carry more internal fuel, freeing its hard points to be able to carry more ground attack ordnance rather than drop tanks. Now, France ended up placing an arms embargo on Israel after their invasion of Lebanon, and using the Mirage 5 themselves as well as exporting it, so possibly it ends up as the French premium equivalent to the A5C or the J35A, at the US F5C and the new German MiG-21 SPSK, which is looking very interesting. Israel would end up building the aircraft themselves as the Nesher, and this is a jet I very much expect Israel to receive this patch around the 10.0 BR range, depending on its weapons. Israel would later develop the Kefir as an extensive upgrade to the Nesher, and this is where the tree can really start to get somewhat interesting. What's going to set these aircraft apart is the weapons they'll have access to, being the Shafria and later Python series of air-to-air -air missiles. Now, the Shafrir 1 in-game on the Israeli Vautor is basically an AIM-9B with some very slight differences, uh, but the later models would have some quite unique characteristics. The Kefir will likely end up coming in a couple of variants as it's really the most unique aircraft Israel can get, and with their later Python missiles could easily compete with fourth generation aircraft in a close-in engagement. Like, this is still sounding like very little reason for Israel to be a tech tree rather than remaining what it has been until now, a collection of premium event or potentially squadron or battle pass vehicles going into their respective nations. I mean, couldn't the Black Spitfire be put in the British tree as a new premium, or the modified A4 in the American? I and many other players will I'm sure be quite irritated if the US don't soon receive a later Skyhawk modification of their own such as the Marine Corps A4M with the walleyes, potential for strikes one day, an even more powerful engine and a CCIP system. They certainly don't need it, but they have the right to it. We already have the Vulture with Chefriers in the French tray, just like we have the Cuban MiG-17 in the Soviet tray, or the Rhodesian Hunter in the British. Nobody's asking for a Cuban tech tray, so what gives? 
Couldn't the Kafir with Pythons just be added as a French premium or event vehicle one day when we have later aircraft? Even more so, as I'm sure some of you are wondering, why am I not angrily ranting about this seemingly fully copy-paste tech train? Well, there's two parts to that. Firstly, that I don't think this tech tray will cause any issues, and unlike China, or even post-war Germany, Israel doesn't tend to dip into both NATO and Soviet tech. At the very least, the rare Soviet vehicles they did use, even in the case of captured Syrian T-55s, which were quite modified as well, uh, they're still being used by the same side. At this point, it's actually rare for British Spitfires to ever fight against BF-109s, which I think is crazy, uh, but the Israeli tech tree won't do much, if any, to add to these sorts of problems, which is only even a problem at all if you happen to think like I do. Sure, depending on which nations Israel fights with, British Spitfires may fight Israeli Spitfires, but uh, not only is that actually historical, um, it'll also let me fight Israeli 109s, and I'll be up against P-51s either way. So while I don't put much stock into the Israeli aviation tree, depending on what they happen to get at the top BR, I'm also just not bothered by it. But where I think Israel has more potential for interesting vehicles is in its ground tree. Now, I won't go over specific vehicles just yet that I think will come, since I'll obviously want to cover them in another video when the Israeli ground tree is released, but... Suffice it to say that there are plenty of unique, shall we say novelty vehicles and weapon systems, uh, like the Pereh comes to mind. Obviously a lot of the Israeli ground tech will already be somewhat familiar to us, later modifications of the Megash and Shot Kal, Sherman's, AMX-13s, and obviously what would have been entirely new and unique if it weren't for Gaijin making them the primary event reward over the last three years, Markovas. But there are also plenty of different weapon systems, designs, and vehicle types with their own unique factors that could come. Uh, not quite enough to make up a tech tree just of themselves, uh, too many to all be added as event rewards and premiums, but just enough to make it worth grinding the tech tree while the copy-paste vehicles just fill in the holes and give them lineups to be used with. See, the main problem with so-called minor nations without much domestically produced tech is that they lack the potential for lineups. We recently made a video guide showing just how important lineups can be, how much it improves gameplay to have a well-structured lineup, as well as a guide on putting them together in the first place, which I would love for you guys to go and check out. The thing is though, Sweden is by far the worst defender for this right now, with practically no lineups at all between 2.7 and 7.7. Israel may not have much in the way of its own domestic tech, especially not for aircraft, but unlike Sweden or Italy for example, uh, they've operated enough vehicles of different nationalities to create strong enough lineups around the more unique flavours of their trade. They may not have lineups nearly as extensive as the American 6.3 or German 5.7 or 8.7, but they certainly won't be as lacklustre as the Swedish mid-tiers or Italians or Japanese throughout the World War II BRs. I don't know what else to say, I don't think copy pasta in and of itself is a problem per se, the problem is more when vehicles have to fight themselves as a main opponent, as well as when nations lack their own tech because it went into a minor nation tree instead. So as long as Israel doesn't accentuate those two problems, I see no real issue. I think it's kind of sad that this basically says that World War II is no longer even an important consideration of this game, but it kind of wasn't already. I think the basic way to sum it up is, was this necessary? No, of course not. The Israeli tech tree won't be overly special if you're someone who already has many of their premiums or event vehicles, and they'll be most of what you can expect, so get ready for that. But it will basically just be a neat way to collate them all into consolidated lineups, while also gaining access to a couple of unique vehicles like the Israeli Super Mystere modifications with Shafriers or the Sabra. Now while Gaijin could just keep adding Israeli event vehicles to other nations forever, uh, putting vehicles like these into their own Israeli tech tree rather than making the next 15 event or premium vehicles for France, America, Britain, Italy and even Russia, Israeli variations of their vehicles, let's Gaijin add more exciting vehicles instead, like the Polki 2 for Germany, the Leopard AS1 for a British premium, or the Lazansky for Russia. 
We get the opportunity for more vehicles, which I'm happy about. From a nation that, as I said, is a major player on the modern world stage, which makes sense. And the tree brings no issues that other nations haven't already. Please give Sweden a Sherman. And whilst I understand that to a lot of you guys this might seem like a bit of a cash grab, I don't know what else to tell you guys, I'm just not really bothered by this, I don't get what people are upset about. The thing that is most unfortunate is simply Gaijin's lack of planning ahead. In the time that this tree has been in the works, Gaijin have implemented at least six Israeli vehicles into other nations, which now make no sense there and have to be discontinued. And already, they remove a lot of the unique attractions such vehicles would have had, were they appearing in the new Israeli tech tree for the very first time. Anyway, that's about all I have to say. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you're excited about the Israeli tech tree, I really do. I hope that if you're grabbing anything off the store that you'll use our link below and display your koala decals proudly, uh, send us some screenshots. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll catch you lads on the battlefield. It's so fun. It's so much fun. Right on the beat as well, dude. Fuck me, this is too much fun. <laughs>